Well, welcome, Tonse. Good morning. And um, I want to have some reflection about our project and kind of focus on your transition and your lessons uh, in regard to the First Nation math. And I want to go back to when we started the program. And um, we started in August. And we had a full day of cultural immersion with our elder, Albert Scott. And um, how you learned anything from that day. And let's reflect on maybe on that day. That day was, um, when I look back on the project, probably one of the most important days in the project. And there was, there, it, it wasn't about math at all. It was just about First Nation culture. But on that day, um, I learned a lot about the values and beliefs of First Culture or First Nation people, of Indigenous people. And I saw the similarities, so many similarities that I didn't realize were there between my beliefs and, and the First Nations beliefs. And it, it, made it made me more comfortable with bringing the knowledge into the classroom. Um, I know when I've reflected on this before, I, I think every teacher should have a day like that. I think it would help us not even just to teach it in the classroom, but to relate to our students that have Indigenous background. Okay. Um, for those watching the videos, maybe can you make some reference to some cultural uh, experience that you uh, maybe experienced that day? Um, well, we had we had a feast and the prayer time. There were you know differences and similarities, but it was just it was very eye opening. Um, the thankfulness um, that was in the room the whole time, the idea that we we give to each other. There was just every not everything, but a lot of the um, handing out of the food was always putting the other person first and thinking of the other person. And then I remember talking to you because. Um, it, it took a long time and in my household we eat in 15 20 minutes you know we visit and we're gone um and i talked to you about about the children you know and you said how the children they they, they do that for three or four hours they sit they quietly eat and wow that just amazed me because um we in our culture are so rushed now and yeah. Yeah. We call that the ceremonial time. Right. And uh, we don't have a set time. In the Western uh, society, I think, we plan a meal and we're supposed to be done in 45 minutes kind of thing that's extended. But right. when we come to our ceremonies, they can last when the sun rises until the sun reaches noon time. So that's the Indian time, that ceremonial time. Mm -hmm. So that's good that you, you recognize that in that experience. And uh, also the importance of the pipe ceremony as well, yes, yes. because that's how we want to start our project, right. and that's how we bring sacredness to all that we do in our ceremony. So it was nice for us to gather around the pipe to start this project. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the next day, we had a full day with myself in um, teaching you and guiding you how you can infuse some First Nation ideas into the project. Right. So how did that day go for you? It was it was it was awesome. I made so many notes. Um, the morning, if I remember correctly, we did some history, and definitely had to you know squeeze it in to the the time period we had. There were so many questions I still had, but I learned so much just about um, how history is a little bit different than what I was taught in school. Um, and then in the afternoon, yes, you shared projects with us, and um, they were they were so good because at that point in time, it was still how am I going to put this into a math lesson? How am I going to, and you gave us hands-on ideas that would work. And I know um, we had two teachers that were teaching division um, two math. We had two teachers teaching division three, four math. And together we were just sharing ideas and oh, this would fit with this outcome. And oh, I could do this with this outcome. So it, they, that, one day to me could have been three days easily. Yeah. Um, it was a lot piled into one, but at the same time, really, I felt better equipped yeah. to move forward. Yeah, I enjoyed that afternoon because I focused on creating the dream catcher. Right. And, uh, but everybody thinks about dream catcher being a part of just art uh, or social studies mm -hmm. or maybe some science. But, you know, it was take a second thought to infuse it in math. So it was really beautiful for me to observe my my project teachers 
to take the dream catcher and make you look at it from a math perspective and say, now when you're doing the dream catcher after I taught you how to make a dream catcher, think of the dream catcher in math terms. Where would you infuse it in your math? And it was beautiful to see your ideas from each of your grade levels come right. out. And that was beautiful to see that collaboration and, and the aha moments of yes. how you could infuse a dream catcher in your math lessons. That was beautiful. Now, we left you in the project to think about infusing First Nation math ideas in your certain grades. And um, what did you come up with about your ideas? I, I, I knew I wanted to do something with our, in the number strand. And I picked multiplication because it was, it was a timing timing thing. It was about where I was in my year plan. Um, as well, right or wrong, I thought, I have all these great ideas you've given me. I know already how to use them. Let's see if we can get some more great ideas um, in there. So I remember coming to you and saying that I wanted to do multiplication. I did not know, though, how I was going to put First Nation knowledge into it. Um, and that's where you came in. You, you yeah started brainstorming ideas and we wrote them down and came up with the idea of the drumming. Right. Um, but you were vital to that. I'm not sure, you know, if I if I could have got there. But yeah. at the same point in time, I did have, like I said, you did four different um, creative activities with us that I could have used. Yes. So. Yeah. So it was just brainstorming, you and I sitting right. down together and some ideas of how we could infuse that and uh, drumming was something that came up in our discussion and um, so we incorporated a cultural knowledge keeper uh, mm -hmm. to come and spend some time with your class about drumming and uh, tell us about that experience. It was wonderful. This, the students um, were so engaged. He, he came in the first day and he, he drummed for us, he sang for us and then he talked about the making of the drum, he talked about why the drum was important to him, what it meant in his life, and the students were, at the end he had questions, he had time for, about 10 minutes time for questions, they had so many questions, and good questions, you know, about um, what, why it was sacred to him, how, you know, why did he hang it up and not let it sit, you know, and those type of things, which, at a grade five level, I think is, is very important because I think in some ways they are building their beliefs and values at that time, you know, and to, right. to have someone talk so clearly about the importance. Yeah. So how did you infuse the drumming into your lesson then? Maybe a, a brief explanation of how you yeah. used it. So then what we decided to do was to look at the patterns of beats and how the beats patterns were repeated. And could we pick up on a, first of all, a pattern of beats and give that a number? And then could we count the number of times it was repeated, give that a number so that we could multiply to come up with the total number of beats? So it was a basic start in grade five to multiplication, of course, but an under, uh, a real life understanding of okay. groups and numbers of groups. Beautiful. Yeah. So were the students able to manipulate the drum then or how oh, did that Oh yeah, work? we started with, um, we, we, when our First Nation gentleman came and drummed, we didn't do any math, we just listened to him and then the next part we did was we, we watched some videos on the, the, the smart board and I had found the videos and we counted just to see if could we count could we keep up you know and we okay. could and the, they were like oh, yes we can do this and so they were coming up and they were writing their they had just a piece of paper in front of them. they were writing their multiplication down and of course the within the first nation drumming the beats would change right and the tempo would change and, and some of them would say this is palmer i came up with one that was in the middle or you know or the ending was different and, <laughs> and so then i said to them well do you think you could make up your own drumming patterns. Well, then they were, yes. And I said, well, what if we asked our specialist to come back oh, right. and maybe he could, you know, teach us some drum, some actual drumming, yeah. and then we could create our own patterns and present them to the class. And yeah, they were, they were hooked. Yeah. Um, nice. Really enjoyed it. Beautiful. Yeah. So in Western math, we're so always focused around assessment because mm -hmm. we want time to curriculum. Mm -hmm. So was there assessment in this lesson? There was, because what we ended up doing was each of the students came up with their own drumming pattern. 
that they would present to a small group of five or six other students and they had the other students as they presented had to count and come up with the number of beats and the number of times it was repeated and then write the multiplication statement from that. So okay. in the end they wrote five different multiplication statements. Oh. Um, and then when we were done, we actually had a couple of the students say, Mrs. Palmer, we could use this for division two because we could take the total number of beats. Oh, and, that's nice. But yeah, so. So they made those good. associations they on did. their own. Oh, yes. that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And how did they feel about infusing that First Nation teachings into what we call the Western math? To them, I think it was just natural. Um, yeah, they they really enjoyed it. The students that were our hands-on students um, picked up on it. I didn't have one student that didn't want to drum, right? You oh, know, okay. like I can think of, but no, they they were all engaged. And even my students that struggled with basic math facts yeah. could count, Beautiful. right? And sometimes we would have to repeat the drum for them, you yeah. know, because they might only get the number of beats yeah. first and then they didn't couldn't keep track of how many times it was repeated. So we would repeat it. Beautiful. Um, our special our our consultant who came in, he also was involved, which was awesome okay. because it was something new for him too. <laughs> and he went around with the groups and then the oh that was really special for the <laughs> students, you know, they had him nice. drumming and having, you know, and then they all wanted to present their drumming, of course, to oh, him. Yeah. Now they've had an audience. That's great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's yeah. cute. Let's talk about your next lesson that you had. The beating lesson. Okay. okay. Yes. So the next lesson I decided was going to be in our patterns and relationships unit. Okay. And I decided to do some beating. After watching my students um, with the hands on with the drumming and how it engaged all of them, I really wanted to do something hands-on again okay. because um, like I said it, it just a couple of my students that were very weak didn't they felt like they were the rest of a part of the class right, right? you know and they and it was um, yeah meaningful to them so with the beating um, this time I think I relied a lot less on you I, I, I knew what what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it, I had to look up some of the First Nation knowledge behind beating and the information. And it was very nice to have you there to, you know, send that to you and say, hey, is this correct? Am I on the right path? Yeah. And, um, but yeah, it, it flowed a lot, a lot better. It went a lot smoother, but again, um, very, very engaging. I had students asking, you know, of course, when we were done, when we could loom again. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That's nice. um, but uh, there again, what we did was we, we made our own beating, and then we exchanged beatings, and okay. we looked at each other's beatings, and, and we were grouping quadrilaterals. I was doing it with okay. an outcome about grouping quadrilaterals. So oh, they looked okay. for other people's quadrilaterals and described the attributes Beautiful. of those quadrilaterals. Yeah. Wow. So that's a really so, nice project. Yes, came in there. Yeah. So you said you relied on consultant or support less from your first lesson. Yes. What do you think changed your mindset in that way? I think after doing the first one, I I saw um, I don't want to say the pattern, but the way that I could incorporate the First Nation knowledge into the lesson. Um, I think you know, in reflection and looking back and after watching you come in and teach a lesson on birch bark biting, right. I still have a lot to learn <laughs> <laughs> um, because in my lessons, it, it felt like, still felt like it would start off with First Nation knowledge and then we would say, this is what we're doing in math. Okay. And then we would combine the two at the end oh, with right. the project. Whereas when I watched your lesson, it was like, a little bit of First Nation knowledge, a little bit of math, a little bit of First Nation knowledge, a little bit. It was just intertwined right. throughout. Yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah. So know. it was very integrated. Hey? Yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, and as a consultant, I just do that naturally. Right. right? And I know. Because I know where I want to infuse the First Nation culture. And then for you at the beginning, um, so you're at the beginning stage where you're introducing the First Nation knowledge, then the Western math kind of thing, and bringing those connections. Right. So, together. and do you feel that as the more you have 
experience with First Nation culture, or perhaps let's say next year you do this this breathing lesson or the drumming lesson, that you'll learn more of in that infusing yes. the lesson instead yeah. of doing the history and then the right. now. That will be my goal. Yes. Yeah. Now to go back on my lesson and look at it and say how could I intertwine them instead of having them you know, feel like they were still a little bit distinctly separate. That's yeah. All. Yeah. 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 You talked a little bit about some children being very comfortable with mm -hmm. math than just using the, the textbook and, and notebook oh, kind of yes. thing. Um, were there any uh, feedback from the students of how different this teaching of math was compared to your regular instruction? Oh, definitely, definitely. I haven't taught math for very many years, um, and so one of the one of my areas I would really like to is is to try to have that real life experience with all math because that's that's math is, um, but sometimes when we get into the classroom, um, it becomes very book structured and and to me students are engaged and they remember more when we can make it that life experience and by bringing in the first nation first called nation culture knowledge that that brought it to real life. Good. So, yeah. It was. Did your mindset as a teacher uh, change in preparing your lessons? Like, when we first started in the first days, we, we were doing a lot of collaboration with the teacher project, the project teacher that were involved in the project. Right. And did that continue? No, well, we, we, we collaborated a, a bit as a staff here ourselves um, because there were two teachers in Division Two that were involved in the project. We could talk and bounce ideas off each other more okay. so than depending on you um, or Dr. Aikenhead to um, to guide us. Did that happen before the project took place, or no. did it? No. Okay. No. Oh, all right. No, it didn't. No. So that kind of created a new discussion and a new collaborative discussion group around math? Right, yes. Okay. Yeah, because I'm in a smaller school, um, I am the only grade five math teacher. There's only one grade six math teacher. Right. So we, we're teaching separate curriculums, even though there are some, you know. Right. Similarities. Similarities between the two. Yeah. 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 Do you think you'll find yourself collaborating a little more in the future? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So, what would your classroom look like in the future now that you have this experience? I am going to try to include um, more lessons next year. I have two done. I am going to do a third one with my last unit okay. in math. Uh, next year, I would actually like to have. Um, a lesson for sure in in every unit right and I find I'm more I'm trying more to look for the real life experience rather than just the practice that's beautiful to hear yeah. and I think that'll be a very good experience for your students so I think you've you've grown in that way of infusing First Nation culture into the class into your math concepts and um, I really appreciated being a part of your project and uh, guiding you in your support when you needed it yes. and when you asked <laughs> for it. So I look forward to that in the future as well. Good. So I thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience and, uh, and sharing your knowledge and sharing from the heart of what you learned and sharing with your heart with those listening to our interview today. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.